Hey guys, super excited to show you today how you can build your first agent using Google's ADK. I spent dozens of hours reviewing Google's newest agentic framework, and I'm confident it's the best platform to build AI agents in 2025. We'll build a travel concierge who will use multiple AI agents who will work together using tools like Google Places, Google Search. And don't worry if you're new to agent development, I'm going to walk you through everything step by step. I'm going to share the code for free. And obviously, if you have any questions, you can just drop a comment down below. All right, so here is the plan. First, we're going to go over Google's agent development kit to show you exactly what it is. And second, we're gonna go over five steps that will help you go from installing Google's ADK on your computer all the way to building a multi-AI agent system. All right, so let's dive in. Before we dive into the code, it's important we understand what Google Agent Development Kit is, also known as ADK. It is basically the agentic framework provided by Google. So you have an agent to whom you're gonna be providing a set of instructions and descriptions. And then depending on your use case, you might give them access to different tools. If you have already used other frameworks from Lama Index, CreAI, or Langraph, a lot of it is going to sound familiar. If this is the first time that you're hearing all these terms, I have more in-depth tutorials to help you get started with your first AI agents. So the advantage of Google's ADK is that it is open source, it is free, but you also have a lot of pre-built integrations and tools that we're going to be using. Cool. So now that we know what Google's ADK is, we can go over to the five steps that will help us go from setting up ADK on our computer all the way to running your multi-AI agent system. All right, so let's go over the five key steps you need to take to build your first multi-AI agent. So step one, we're just gonna download ADK and ensure that all the keys and the whole thing is running properly. Step two, we're gonna build our first agent, a very simple agent, just to show you how it works. Step three, we're gonna build tools so that our agents have more capabilities and are more powerful. Step four, we're gonna add more agents so that we can create this first multi-AI agent system. And then finally, in step five, we're gonna run it and test it out. In this context, we're building a travel concierge who will use Google Maps, Google Search, and come up with custom trips for us. All right, so let's go. All right, so welcome to step one, where we're gonna ensure that everything is set up correctly on our computer. So step one, we're gonna to have to create a virtual environment so that we can install Google ADK, so the agentic framework. Then we're gonna create a folder on our computer so that we can manage all the different files that we need uh, for our agents to run properly. Then we're gonna get the different API keys, so the Gemini keys for the different LLMs to run and help our agents to think and act. And then finally, we're gonna test the dev UI, which is a very fancy feature that Google's ADK has developed to test out agents in development. So let's go. So step one, we need to create our virtual environment. I'm just following this, these steps. So once you've created this environment, you need to activate it. To activate it, you need to run this command if you're a Mac OS. And finally, you can then install Google ADK. Now we can create the project structure where we have the major folder, which is called Travel Concierge in this, in this case. And in this folder, we're gonna have the main agent along with the main prompt. So just like I, I showed you earlier, we have a root agent with a set of description and instruction. And just to keep it tidy, I just have a different file where I'm just prompting a set of instructions. Then the fourth step is where we're gonna to have to get our different API keys. So to do so, you have to hop over to AI Studio where you can create an API key. You just give it a name and then you add it in your folder as you can see here. Perfect, so now that we are done with step four, we can go over to step five, which is starting the dev UI. It's just a very simple UI that will help us test out our agents. All right, so let's just start the dev UI. Cool, so now I'm just gonna copy paste this URL here. And then we can see that Travel Concierge is here. Perfect, so now we can configure our first agent and test it out. All right, so welcome to step two where we're gonna define and build our first agent. So here it's a very simple agent called the Travel Concierge and we're giving it a set of instructions and the description is just being a travel concierge. Here's the prompt that I'm calling saying you're an exclusive travel concierge and you help users discover their dream holiday destination and plan their vacation, All right? You can see that the server is running so we can hop over to the server. And now I'm just gonna ask the agent, uh, I want to go to Rome, give me some recommendations. And you're gonna see now that the agent is going to give me information based on the data on which the LLMs have been trained, right? So the travel agent is going to ask me about when I'm going. It's going to return me some musty attractions and other things to consider, right? So this is still fairly basic. And now I'm going to actually show you how you can actually add tools to your agent so that they can actually give you more information about timely events and uh, potential recommendations about specific locations. All right, so now let's just add the first tool to our agent. So we're just gonna use one of the pre-built tools, which is Google Search from Google. So it's very simple, you just call it here. 
and then uh, we just want to add this capability to our agent, right? So our travel concierge now has access to web search. It's as simple as that. It, it is important though to specify to your agent as part of his instructions to use the Google search tool to inform user about the current events so that he knows when to call that tool, right? So perfect, so now we can go over to the dev UI and test it out. So I'm just gonna test out something about Rome. I'm actually going there in a couple of weeks and unfortunately the Pope passed away and so I just want to test out to see if actually the agent knows about it because none of you know no LLMs have been trained on that. So what happened to the Pope over the last couple of days? Is this going to affect Rome? You can see that the root agent called the Google search, right? And you can see the information that has been returned. So you have the chunks from Economic Times, so the different articles from which all the content has been. Uh, right. Now I'm gonna show you like the second tool, which is to use agent as tools and why this is important as you are building multi-AI agent systems. All right, so the second tool is where we're just gonna wrap this Google search tool with an agent. And the reason we're doing this is to ensure that we have more control over the output of the tool. So you can actually say that this agent, so the search agent is gonna use the search tool, right? So Google search, but it's actually gonna interpret the results before passing it on, passing it on to our final agent who's uh, the travel concierge. So always, so here I'm just gonna add some specific conditions. So always, always return your response in bullet points, specify why it matters, right? To the user and give out, add a random joke at the end of your response, just to show you how this works. Okay, so now we have the search agent that we can then call within this tool. So Google search grounding is just a wrapper around the search agent that you can see here, right? And this same search agent is using the pre-built tool from Google search. So again, the point of this is just to ensure that we have more granularity and more control over the output of our tools. Okay, so now we're just gonna use this Google search grounding and add it to our agent here. So I'm just gonna actually replace this tool with this one, right? So I uh, just need to uncomment this, perfect. So it has access to it. So now I'm just gonna show you again how this works, okay? So let's go over to the web server and ask about, can you give me recommendations about Rome next week? Especially I want to attend events happening soon, okay? Let's see, so hopefully it's gonna call the Google search grounding tool. So it did call it here, perfect. So now it's returning some relevant events, right? So the candlelight concerts, the Roman vegan city and whatever. So now you can see root agent called the Google search grounding agent. Now this wrapped agent actually added the city joke at the end. Why, why did the stadium leave his girlfriend? Because she was too attached to the bleachers. <laughs> Okay, well, we forgot to specify that it had to be a funny joke. But yeah, you get the idea. So now we have the root agent, who's like the travel concierge, who interpreted the results of the search of the agent who's like doing the Google search. And then it's like returning like a final output. So as you can imagine, it gives you more control over how information gets returned and you can actually sanitize it, or in this case, just add like silly jokes. So now we're gonna build our last function tool, which is a little bit more complex. So I have this folder called tools where I have the different set of tools. Here, I'm just gonna create a tool that will allow me to interact with the Google Places API. And so you have different functions. I'm not gonna, take, I'm not gonna dive into it too much, but essentially the goal here is that Every time you're calling a specific tool, you have some set parameters that the agents will have to pass. So in this case, it's a query type string, right? So the agent will know how to use that. Here you're providing examples. So the arguments, the query has to be, for instance, Eiffel Tower in Paris, and then it should return a dictionary with place ID, place name, and so on. So all of this is simply just giving context to the agent to understand how to pass parameters to the tool as input, but then also how to analyze the output. Uh, so here it's returning from the Google Places API, place ID, place name, and so on. And um, this is super important when you're creating this functional tools to give examples on how to pass the input parameters and how to interpret the output results. Um, so, so this is how we're gonna interact with the Places API. So I'm just gonna show you now how this works. So we're going back to our main agent, and instead of having Google search grounding, I'm going to ask for place search tool, right? So I just added it there. Now we're going to go over to our travel concierge. Give me the exact address FO tower, right? So now it's calling actually the tool, find places from text. Now you have this address, 79 Avenue de la Bourdonnais. 
And you can see here that the agent called find place from text, right? So this is the actual tool that we created. And then it returned those results, photos, place ID, place name. So as you can imagine, it can get a lot fancier. All right, great. So now we built three different tools. So we have the built-in Google search tool, the agent is tool, and the function tool. Now we're going to allocate those different tools to different agents so that we can create our first multi-AI agent system that will create custom trip recommendations for us. Let's go. All right, so welcome to step four, where we're going to connect tools to different agents so that we can have a super powerful travel concierge. So here's just a simple sketch showcasing you like the different relationships. So basically, we're going to have a simple inspiration agent who is going to be responsible to come up with like cool itineraries for us. And so the same agent will have access to two different sub agents. Uh, one of them is going to be the news agent and the other one will be places agent and each of these agents will have tools So news agent will have access to Google search to do some research about the news and places agent will have Access to the Google places tool that we've just created. This is just a simpler version of an agent that uh, Google uh, added to its uh, ADK collection I will add the link to it. Uh, you can actually use use them all for free So yeah, so let's get going now I'm just going to show you how to configure each uh, of the agents in the code so first, we need to connect the inspiration agent to Travel Concierge, right? So if we go over here, um, we are adding just sub-agents with this inspiration agent, which we have configured. We need to update the prompt and say, OK, use the inspiration agent, right? And then we have basically just a set of sub-agent folders. And um, as you can see here, we have the inspiration folder with the different agents. So we have the news agent, we have the place agent, each of these agents have access to different tools, right? News agent has access to the Google Places tool that we've created, to the Google Search tool, right? And Places agent has access to the, to the Places tool. Now, an inspiration agent, we are wrapping as tools those agents. And this is just to make sure that we keep a strict hierarchy. So essentially, what this means is inspiration agent is going to use news agent or Places agent, depending on what we're asking to the travel concierge, right? So this is the flow. And then each of these agents have access. And the only task that they have is to interpret and analyze the output of these tools, right? So Google Search, Google Places, and so on. Perfect. So now let's just connect all the pieces together, um, which is here, right? And let's go over to the server. All right, so now we are on the dev UI. So I want to go to Rome next week based on the current events tell me where I should go and stay. Okay, let's see. Perfect. So transfer to agent, it went to the news agent and to the place agent. You can see root agent went to inspiration agent, it called both of these agents. Perfect. Here's what I would recommend. I want to find a student nearby Colosseum, places agent, right? So now it actually is going to return this Restaurant Ristoro de la Salud, located at this address. OK, great. How about the events? Is there a football game happening next week? Now it's calling the news agent. Perfect. So we can see that there are two games, Ice Roma, Fiorentina, and against Parma. You can get tickets there based on where I want to eat and do. Give me a detailed planning, right? So now. The agent, so now it's probably going to be the responsibility of the travel agent to tell me, okay, go to this restaurant, head to the Colosseum, and then go and watch the game Lazio, right? So it created this whole planning fairly quickly, uh, which is very exciting. I'm actually quite looking forward to doing some of these things. So yeah, hopefully this is helpful. And now I'm just going to go over step five, which is about debugging and helping you understand the results so that you can actually build more complex agents down the road. OK, now we're going over to step five, which is about understanding what's going on under the hood in your agents so that it can help you debug your agents. All right, so I just want to go over the logs of our interaction so that we can really understand what happened under the hood. And I think this is very helpful for you to then build more powerful agents. So here you can see the first request was, I want to go to Rome next week based on the current events. And then you can see that the root agent sent the call to inspiration agent, who in turn called place agent and news agent, right, to analyze the query. Then news agent and place answered the inspiration agent and so on. And then towards the end, you see that the inspiration agent created this final planning, right? What's interesting is if we look at here, if we look at here, find place from text, I actually forgot to remove the tool from root agent. But the reason it didn't use it 
is because we mentioned in the instructions you cannot use any tool. However, if I am to remove that part, right, and we create a new session, give me a restaurant near the Colosseum in, in Rome, you're going to see that actually it's immediately using the find place from tool and it's actually returning you some URLs. would really suggest you to use this dev UI to debug and understand what's happening. So that's it with step five, where I just wanted to show you how you can use dev UI to understand what's happening under the hood to help you debug your agents, especially as you're building more complex multi AI agent systems. All right, so in today's video, we learn about Google's agent development kit and the five steps you need to follow to build your first multi AI agent system. You now have the keys to the most powerful platform to build AI agents in 2025, so congrats. To get started, you can access all the code for free, and if you need any help building your first agent, you can also book a free strategy session below. If this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next week for more AI content. Ciao!